sure they don't tell you. I'm Nikki Lebo. Miracle Man, checking in. Where's the Ice Man? Is he right here? Well, where's the Miracle Man? Do you not have eyes? Are you okay, Nikki? I have eyes. Do we need to do this again? Man. Eyes. Are you still sick? Ice Man. I am actually pretty drunk. Okay. Um, but <laughs> you have to watch the last episode. It carried of over. Us wearing in these outfits because we drank some. No, we're not gonna say the name, but we drink some scotch because you know what? They didn't sponsor us. That's they sponsor right. Sponsor us if they Good want. Good for you. And then we'll say your name, okay? With pleasure. It was very smooth scotch, and we really True. liked it. True. Um, anyway, we're answering more of your questions today because we have quite a few questions for from you, and thank you so much for submitting those. I hope that you um, trust our advice. Still uh, mildly <sighs> inebriated. Um, oh, sure. But just a reminder, we are not experts at any of this. We are just giving you calls, calling it like we see it. If you think that Drunk Nikki is an expert, huh, I got news for you. I am, actually. Oh, you're you're, you're, you're claiming the mantle of expert? No, no. No, okay. no, no. Okay, no. Okay, okay, okay. But I will say I'm, I think I'm better at um, like things going through clearly. <laughs> Never mind. Holy I, shit. I, I abort, 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 abort. <laughs> no, okay. So when I was drunk is when we got together because I uh, just said things that I normally wouldn't have said. That's true. But they were true. It's all truth. I feel like I just have a truth serum when I drink alcohol. She does. That I don't have a filter of like niceness and maybe I shouldn't say that and I don't like... You know, but you're not a mean drunk. No, you no, make no, it sound no. like you're a mean drunk. Oh, no. Did I make it sound mean? No, yeah. no, I'm not mean. I just... Uh, I just say things as they come to me Very rather direct. than um, Very beating around the bush. Especially, might I add, with tequila. And I'm a pool shark, and I'm much better at pool when I'm drunk. I like am actually really good at pool when I I'm think drunk. You're a pool shark who only faced minnows. Huh? I don't think that you faced another pool shark. No, oh, me neither. Because I am a fucking pool shark. Wait, have you never played me? Listen. I don't think we have played pool. Dude, we need to film that. I am incredible at pool. Are you? I, I'm only incredible when I drink. I'm terrible when I'm sober. But when I drink, it's like a whole new beast comes out. Is and that right? I'm like really, I think I just get really focused and I get really concentrated and there's no clutter in my mind. I have a lot of things going on constantly in my mind during the day. And when I have a drink, it just disappears. That's the. That's actually and not I'm even kidding. That's the nickname more focused. from my pool days is Ace. Shut up. Uh, you're so, so annoying. No, I'm serious. I now don't even know if you think listen, you're good at pool. I, I get it because you're frustrated, right? I have a lot of cool nicknames and you don't even have one. And you're not I even have. known for one cool nickname. Right, right, right. But that's Ace, what I'm frustrated Ace about. is the third. That, All that's right. For my I'm pool just going to get on to these questions. I picked these randomly. There were so many questions that I just tried to vary it between like relationship ones and non-relationship ones yeah. um but we love all of them equally and hopefully i did a good job i did not pre-read these at all so this is our first time hearing it here we go all right ready pick me i love you guys desperately need you to answer for real for real for real oh glad we did it all right wonderful uh really need your help is all in bold with a cry emoji and then hey nikki and steve you're my favorite to listen to and watch i love you guys thank you so much oh my god Mwah. Now, I desperately want to hear your guys' opinion on this. My parents hate my boyfriend of five years. Wow. Holy shit. I wish I could give a good explanation why, but sadly, they simply hate him because he's black. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's terrible. And they kind of blame him for me not going to college anymore, which isn't true at all. We broke up a few years back. That's because we were both young and I was going to college. He was staying at home, so long distance I couldn't. Do, I couldn't do long distance, so we broke up, and it crushed my heart. But I went to college, and I tried, and it didn't work out for me. So I moved back, and we got back together, been together ever since. And no, my parents aren't even white themselves. My dad is mixed. My mom is Hispanic. So now that I'm 22 and my boyfriend is 25, we want to move in together, start our lives. But my parents are are also hardcore Christians who believe that two people should be married before they live together. Also believe in no sex before marriage, but, uh, and <laughs> of course I want I get that. I know what that means. Yeah. And of course I want to marry him and he wants to marry me. I just don't get, well, I just don't want to get married because it's forced too soon. So how do I even tell my parents without them completely disowning me? Because I love my parents. I do, even if their word view of the world is messed up, but I know they're only trying to love me in their messed up way and want me to have the best life without struggling. This whole thing is making me have gray hair please help me cry emojis by a million okay i've been sincerely I've, a very stressed out girl i have been workshopping how to deal with racist parents for years you can't change them they're old they're stuck in their ways yeah i've also been watching a lot of really cheap dating shows and one thing i have noticed 
is that nobody has done this yet, which I think that you should do. What cheap dating shows? Okay. There's a couple, but I'll, but, but okay, it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Okay. Hire a white man to be your, quote, boyfriend, right? Oh, so lie. Hold on. Okay. He wears an earpiece. Okay. That is connected to your real boyfriend who is in a van outside. Okay. Your boyfriend in the van outside tells the boyfriend what to say to your parents so that they have had this nice relationship with this nice young white actor fella. Uh-huh. Okay. Two years go by. You reveal to them that their entire relationship with this fella was actually with this black guy who's in a van outside who has been communicating all of the relationship, like the entire, like the every, every dad joke all that gets rapport. reciprocated, every fake laugh, yep. all the rapport. You, you, you're like, ha ha, you liked this guy the whole time. This is a long game. What like, can they do? They did have a van for a while. Are you leasing you, the van? You, you're, you bought it. Are you, oh, you, you bought leased, the van. You leased to buy it. Okay. Which is good for your credit, by the way. All right. It helps you build your credit. Well, you should do that because you need to build your credit. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> so uh, there you go. You're very welcome. And thanks for writing in. I want to know, serious though, like how do we know it's that the parents don't like him because he's black? Is Are there specific things they've said? Like is it specific examples? Because it sounds like they're just blaming him for you not going to college anymore. But- I feel like that could be any race. I mean, I'm only asking because I'm not saying that this is incorrect or that like, I just don't know, have enough information because she, uh, she says um, my parents are, are, aren't even white. They're mixed race, you know? Right, right. right. They're Hispanic. Well, then this is where I hear a lot of racism happening though is like, like I know we have Asian friends and they say, well, these guys are, are racist against these guys yeah. and like these guys are racist against these guys. Everyone always just thinks it's like, White people versus, but there's right. a lot of interracial uh, disharmony. Yeah, but so the dad is mixed and the mom is Hispanic, mm -hmm. so they're different races. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's not it's so. And they collectively together don't like black people, is what I think they're saying. Maybe if they've said some things, I I guess I just don't have enough information. If it's like, well, there could be another re there couldn't be any other reason besides he's uh, it's because he's black. Like we have a friend who is a or race. Or did they actually say that? We have a friend who is uh, of a, of a race and his mom same does not like black guys. Who? Oh wait. I, I guess can't, you can't say. say it. Yeah. I wish I could. Yeah. Uh but yeah, he 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 t and he talks about it and 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 it's just like she just already decided like Wow. Yeah, so she Oh, I know you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, you know who I'm talking yeah. about. So yeah, so <laughs> she so he already decided or she already decided that yeah. all black guys are the, are this way, uh -huh. right? And so that's, I think, what's going on here. Oh, okay. Well, it could be. Yeah. I guess I was just, it's interesting that, that like a mixed race couple would already think that. And like, I was just mm -hmm. thinking of a, of your band theory of having a white guy. Right. So what if they don't like white guys? What if they want them to Who be Who doesn't Hispanic? like white guys? True. Good point. Good point. <laughs> proof. Good point. It's a perfect plan. All right. Swoosh. <laughs> you know? Um, man, um, okay, so do what you want, honestly. Like, I know you're scared of your parents disowning you, but you have to put your happiness first. It just, Amen. all it's going to be is years of you trying to please your parents, and just you're never going to be the perfect daughter for them. You just aren't. Like, you're never going to live up to their standards, especially when they're against your own standards. Like, if they don't want you to wait till marriage to have sex, but you've already had sex before marriage, like, you already aren't the perfect child for your parents. Sometimes in life, your family are your friends. And, and, and you, you know, you don't get to pick your family, you get to pick your friends. Like, so yeah. sometimes we get to pick our family through our friends and maybe that's what you should be looking at doing. Yeah. I mean, your family just has to accept you for who you are or else they just don't accept you. Like living a lie is not going to improve your relationship with the, with your family. But if you live a lie with an actor in a painter's van and you got the money for it. That's true. Go for it. And tell me how it goes, because it's an experiment. Try so both far. theories out, and then let us know between the two which one works. It worked needs better. a two-year waiting period for a true result. So okay. please remember that. Thank you. Gotcha. Okay. She might be too far in because she, the parents already know the boyfriend. Oh yeah, true. Yeah. I hope not. All right. Well, you know. On okay. the next one. On the next one. Ne on the next one. Thank you. <laughs> you guys should break up and on the next one. <laughs> yeah, we'll do it the next time. <laughs> no, 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 don't break up. Um, no, but no. Put your happiness first, though. Always. Yeah. And that, that not that's not selfish either. I know it sounds like it, but it's not. Okay, next question. The title is For the First Time in Forever. I think that's a, a Disney song. No. Yeah, it is. No, no, no. For the first time in forever. 
I watched it with Clara. I think it's either Frozen or it's some other. I don't even know. Uh, mm, some other one. No. It's a Disney song. Mm, mm, it's Frozen. See, Mark's giving me the ridiculous. thumbs up. Ridiculous. Fuck you. Fuck your face. I never seen no Frozen. Yeah, I know. So you wouldn't know. So why do you argue right away? All right. All right. Hi, Nikki and Steve. You're my favorite podcast. I look forward to you to every Thursday. Yay. Hell yeah. Thank you. And Big Mood's my second favorite and sometimes tied. Oh my gosh, me too. They um, said Big Mood? Yeah. This, wow. is a, this is a recent one. I picked from wow. old ones and from recent ones. They're really recent. They did good. Yeah. Good job. All right. Yeah. It was exactly when Big Mood launched three days ago. We okay. get it. You know, you uh, say anyway, Big Mood a bunch of what, what? I said I agree that this is my favorite podcast. No, I know. Okay. Anyway, this isn't exactly a problem, but I'd like some insight. I've been getting plenty, but I want to hear yours too. I'm 25 and a wallflower almost always. I've been on and mostly off on dating apps since last year. I met a couple of guys, but I never really felt anything until this one before the new year. He is my age and has a ton of experience. It doesn't bother me that he does. In fact, I welcome it. Although I thought I'd only meet an incel and deal with that crap. <laughs> Um, we've, we've quickly connected and admitted that we're falling hard after only a week of exchanging messages on Hinge. We're about to have our first date and we've already talked about waiting, but also still chatting really risque and graphic and messages. Most times that takes up a lot of our chat. It feels nice feeling desired so sexually and consensually, but it, is that a bad sign? After he turned down and canceled dates from other girls, I asked him if it's okay to call us exclusive and he said yes. I feel comfortable and safe and I actually want to do the nitty gritty with him before I find it repulsive to fellatio or be intimate with the guy. But him, yes. Um, too long didn't read. I met a guy on Hinge. Known him for almost two weeks. Okay, we already read the long ones. Yeah, so we yeah, don't yeah. know that. Okay, well anyway, uh, tell it to me straight. Uh, she wants to know if she's falling too quickly for him, basically. Uh, thank you. Hope this gets read soon. Kristen Bell. Uh, parentheses, I'm not cheating on Dax. I hardly know her. For real. That is kidding. a better fake name. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes. They heard our cry. They heard the note. Um, I don't think this is bad. Yeah. She just hears from her friend. I've heard, be aware, you know, don't don't rush into things, you know. Uh, but she says it seems mutual. Well, she's a wallflower. And, she, and, and I think that... Um, if I'm going to shove her into a stereotype, and I, and I like to do that very much, thank you. Uh, I, I feel like she's maybe a very self-analytical person, and maybe she overanalyzes things, and so she's worried about something that is good. Yeah, uh, when before, she's never experienced before she needs to. Before she needs to. She's never experienced anything like this before. Right. Yeah, and also she's you're in your mid twenties now. You're 25, so it's like it's a different ball game in your mid to late twenties as opposed to your early twenties. Yeah, you're you're way more down for real relationships. And guys are more mature yeah. at that age. I don't yeah. know. Like everyone's just more mature. It's it's tight. Uh, people can just say like how they feel, and they don't yeah. try to play as many games with you. It's not as passive aggressive. Yeah, exactly. Unless you're in LA, but um, but mostly. It's not as possible. I don't think it's a bad thing to fall hard for somebody if you really feel that connection and then it's mutual. You know, of course, be wary. Of course, like take things into consideration. But ultimately, love and emotions are not logical. They're just not no. like they like we rushed in where yeah, um, people, all, all of our friends were every like every single one of our fucking every single one of friends friend said that we were going to be rebounds. Yes. That like and they warned us and they're like, I just don't want you guys to get hurt and stuff. We and like some both of you were at our wedding and <laughs> yeah. I was like, why are we letting them come? Yeah, to our they wedding? really were like, don't you go. This is a bad idea. Don't do this. But um, guess what? We followed our instincts and. And guess what? Our relationships are better than we their relationships were back then. We love our relationship. Okay. 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 So, um, yeah, I would just go with the flow. The worst that can happen to you is like what you guys like break up. Okay. Listen. Like what's the worst that could happen? One of my favorite slogans is let Jesus take the wheel. Yeah. And it's also a hell of a song. I guess the worst that can happen is he's a serial killer or something like that. But I mean, you take that risk with anyone, regardless of how long you wait. That's over analytical. I know. So I'm saying, like, go to the worst case scenario. Oh, I see. That's smart. yeah. Like, and then you can work backwards from there. Like, okay, well, that's the worst ha that could happen, and I'm prepared for it. I see. But you know, I don't think that comes from rushing in or not rushing in. Plenty of people have fallen for serial killers after a year of being with them. You know, it's not like it was a time thing. Listen, two weeks ago, I was leaving JK News. I've never been more tired as I drove home. Mm -hmm. I sat back. I let Jesus take the wheel. I actually reclined. Hmm. I woke up home. Two weeks ago? Jesus drove me home. Two weeks ago when you had bronchitis and we were in bed? 
I don't like it when Nikki's on with me because then <laughs> I can't tell my stories. Oh, yeah. You let Jesus take the wheel two weeks ago. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just saying that Jesus is a better autopilot feature than Tesla so far that I've seen. That's true. Let Jesus take the wheel. Market research. Or, you know, whichever God you want. Buddha. Let Buddha take the wheel. Maybe he should it drive sometimes. It just, it just doesn't roll off your tongue. And also, I think he's kind of too big for our compact cars right now. That I just think that day. Buddha is too fair for traffic. Buddha does not get con- uh, does not get angry in traffic, that's for sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that Jesus would get pretty pissed. All right. Next question. I, oh, by the way, I hope we answer that, right? We answer that? Yeah, like hell like yeah. rush into it if you feel it. You like, if you feel it. If there has a connection. Everyone says fools rush in, man. Guess so plan at your fucking wedding. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Thank you. That's we what did we that. did. We did that. Intimate question. Crying after sex? Hi, Nikki and Steve, a.k.a. the Iceman. True. What about the Miracle Man? Where, where's he at? This is the look, look, This is the nickname that they use for me. Oh, okay. 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 Some people call me Miracle Man. Some people call me Iceman. Some, the, people, some call me Ace. Go ahead. I love the podcast that they don't tell you. I'm a huge fan of you guys, and I love the relationship you all have. Thank you. Some may say we rushed in. Uh, and we could name them, by the way, if we <laughs> wanted to. But we won't. Because we're good people. Found you guys since you started with JK News and I am hooked. I have. I hope my question isn't too much information. Don't worry. Never is. I don't have too long of a story with my question, so I'll keep it short. Hopefully this means you will read it. LOL. <laughs> yes, we will. True. I'm 23 and my fiance and I have been together for five years now and we will actually be getting married this March. Congratulations. I honestly feel like I honestly feel like he is my best friend and the one who was meant for me. We have great communication, thanks to the advice I hear from you guys and the JK fam. Mm. I feel like our relationship has gotten only better as time goes on, as well as our sex life. Wonderful. Our sex has always been amazing, but lately I actually feel it getting even better. Yes! That's how it should be. The other day when we were intimate, it felt so good that I started crying seconds right after we finished. That's beautiful. Yeah. Not sobbing, but tears just started running down my cheeks, and I felt so much emotion at that moment. All I could do was kiss and hug my fiance. TMI warning. For the sake of trying to explain what I felt, it was not just an orgasm, but so much more emotion with it. He felt it too, though he didn't cry. He just hugged me while we laid in bed naked. I'm glad he didn't cry. I'm glad. We had sex again, and it was a similar feeling, but not quite as strong as the first time. We were still kind of confused as to what it meant and what exactly we felt. I just assumed it was such an intense emotion that it made me cry. My question is, have you guys ever felt that intense emotion right after sex and any ideas to as to what it means? Is it just another level of love? Is our sex just that good? LOL, JK, but that's what I felt. It, I feel like it doesn't get any better than that. I hope y'all can give me some insight. I would really appreciate it. And if this shows up on the podcast, if you could keep me anonymous, that would be great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you guys. We love you. That's amazing. Congratulations. That's one like so, 100% the person you're supposed to be with. So this is what it's like to be on the other side. Yeah. No, because we. this is what we experience all the time. Yeah. Like you cry all the time. Not all the time. All the time. Every time. Oh, well, I cry at not at sex all the time. You, excuse me. I've cried at sex like maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. a couple times. A couple times. No, no, more than a couple times. I think we. I think you know it's it's been dozens One of times. One time my face got slammed into a nightstand, so well, like that doesn't count. You cried pretty hard. I cried very hard that time. So this is this is almost <laughs> like um, Leonardo DiCaprio. He's like, hey, I just took a private jet and the caviar was so fucking good. Anyway, just wanted to say, is that normal? <laughs> is caviar so fucking good every time? All right, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You did it, kid. But we've had these, this moment before for yes, sure. Yes, many times. So we can be like, yeah, Leo, the caviar is supposed to be that good. <laughs> it's supposed to be. Yeah, but it feels it feels bad for people who haven't tried that caviar in the private So that's what I'm saying. Right? This is how it feels. Yeah. Because now I'm listening to it and I'm like, oh, I get it. Because we're the people usually delivering the information right, right, about right. how sick it is. How sick it is. Yeah. I feel like this is just like a testimonial. Like like we have True. like delivered truth to the, the, to the people. Yep. And then someone's coming forth and being like, yes, this is correct. It worked for me. It worked for me. Yeah. And it can work for you. Like we say, Lord mercy, hallelujah. And then they're like, I, my arthritis is gone. And we're like, see? See? It works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, five years are they're getting married. Wonderful, congratulations. Um, yeah, I think that that it, your sex will hopefully even like only continue to get better. Like this yeah. is it just you're so connected as a you couple, a and you had a moment, and um, this is what intimacy is. Mm-hmm. If you've always been kind of like treating sex as separate than 
you know, love or intimacy or whatever, then maybe you weren't open to experiencing that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But w once you feel so safe and trusting and love your partner so much and are sexually attracted and there's all the spark is there and yeah, it can be very emotional and oh, intense yeah. for sure. Especially when Nikki's jamming her foot in my mouth. I told you I don't want to do that anymore. I was just trying to welcome your well, request. Well, makes me feel very close to you. Okay. We're not doing that anymore, though. I would like it if we did. You know the the reason that we rushed in, and I don't think I don't know if I've shared we if we shared this before, but um, we had sex, and it was only like our second or third time having sex, and we'd only like started seeing each other like a week or so, yeah. or, like beforehand. But it was like the third time we had sex, and it felt like this. Like yes. We made love. We did make love. And that was the first time I ever felt that whole like making love thing. I really didn't know what that meant. Yeah. And I wasn't like into that. Like to me, I just like want the sex to be hot. But it was like, I remember every detail of that night because it. it was just, it really was like making love. There was that incredible connection that was beyond an orgasm. It was like uh, the emotion and stuff. And it only got better after that. But yep. that was what sealed the deal for me that I was, because I was going to wait. I was going to wait, not rush in, take it slow, be kind of yep. casual about it, whatever. We're hooking up, we're going on dates, whatever, but we're not going to be like crazy. Mm -hmm. And after that, I just had to say, I love you. And yeah, stuff. you did. And it was, you know, within, it was 10 days after our first date where I said, I love you. I was like, I can't hold back anymore. Because after that night, I could I couldn't hold back. Sounds Neither. like I'm writing a romance novel. No, it's true. Yeah. I mean, I got nothing to add to that except that you were choking me. Right. Well, I had so my I foot come. in your mouth and then right. I was choking you. That's right. And I never want to do it again. Well, but we, we'll talk it's about it. It's never happening. We'll talk about it. It's okay. We'll talk about it off the air after we do the ad. It's okay. Write it in your journal and we'll talk about it later. Okay. All right. I like it. All right. Next question. Anonymous, please. All right. Hi, Iceman. Thanks for letting me on your podcast and having your assistant read this. I just, this um, is a pile of horse shit. I just shit. did a gesture to camera. We are skipping this. You really should watch it. Watch the show so you can see the Iceman's gesture, the salutation that the Iceman gave the listener. They say, just kidding. I enjoy watching you both and find your senses of humor entertaining. Gee, thanks. I will be, on the next episode, I will be wearing my Ray-Bans the entire time, just so you guys know. So just a little, as a little teaser for Oh, the Ray-Bans I bought you? The Ray-Bans you bought the Iceman, yeah. Because I'm cool. You're all right. <laughs> As for why people call Steve the Iceman, it's because he himself has said to have been wed to a very hot wife. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. So whenever he hugs her for comfort, he melts in her arms. I like this. I like this now. Also, when That's they both... That's not why they call me the Iceman. Also, okay. when they both hot wife and Iceman enter the bed, they create hot steam with all their passion. Simply put, Iceman is half of the dynamic duo that creates his name. He needs his lifelong partner, hot wife, or else nobody would call him Iceman. I got a cool nickname, honey. Hot wife? Hot wife. That's it's what they call cool. That's what they call me. It's not that cool. That's what they call me. Look, look, look. They're calling me that. Look, look. It's not that cool. Quick and simplified question. How does one find happiness if they never had dreams or goals in life? You don't have to read this part. Oh, but I will. <laughs> Current status, 26, almost six figures in, in investments, four months emergency fund in case I want to move jobs, move from the U.S., now working abroad in Asia as an English teacher, nice. no real passions in life, just going through the motions, trying to avoid costly mistakes I've seen many people, inclu including friends and family, make. I do not like drinking or dancing, so I don't go to clubs and bars or concerts and events. I don't play videos or watch movies anymore as it can quickly consume my life with my addictive personality. I have dated and had a long-term relationship of three years, but failed for many reasons. But ultimately, I burdened her with the responsibility of being my only reason to be happy. I'm in no rush to get into another relationship. As for career goals, I've switched jobs five times in the last two years. So I'm really aimlessly searching for that so-called perfect career from city to city, state to state, and now country to country. Most of what I do now is out of frugality, not really because of happiness. I cook to save on food. I work out and do uh, BJJ for self-defense and long-term health reasons. Learning Chinese so I can read and negotiate my rent contract and banking. I've made friends here and I face long time long term friends from back home or I FaceTime long term friends from back home bi weekly to catch up. I'm just meandering until I reach an old age with no goals and want to know what to do till I get there. First of all, you sound fun. 
I think I, I can speak for everyone. There's last sentence is okay. ultimately after all this, I go to sleep every night and I don't know what I want in life and wake up the next day asking myself if I really want to get out of bed. Thank you, Iceman, for your service to the people and Nikki for putting up with all of Steve's shit. Please tell me shit about. they don't tell me. Okay, brother, listen. Uh, that was a bit. Yeah, of course. You sound fun. You you know what you know what you're going through. I know I know what you're going through. Uh, you're a creative guy. I think what you what you came up with in the beginning there with the Iceman uh, hot wife thing. I think that you are not uh, maybe recognizing something that you that you have fun doing. So and perhaps I'm misreading you, but I think that that little that little ditty that you came up with about the Iceman and the hot wife. Mm-hmm. Write a short story for me, okay? And send it to us. Yeah. All right. Write a short story. Now this is just a challenge to you. As I said it's a short story. It's not a very long story. Just write a short story. Do do something fun and creative because I think that you maybe have a creative little part of your pinky that you're not using. Yeah, I think your brain, because of the way that you're operating, where it's like, oh, I'm only doing this to save me money. I'm only doing this to save me money. You're operating in a very like streamlined, logical way. Yes, and you're, uh, you're only using practical. the left brain and not your right brain. And your right brain is just dying to come out. You can tell by that first paragraph, like Steve was saying. And so try doing something just for you. And how do you know it's just for you? You feel this little spark. It's like this little, like, like when you do it, it could be just like writing that, you wrote that sentence, right? And you felt a little like, huh, I wonder how it's going to be when they read it. And you feel this like little, like, spark do like catching yourselves when you feel yourself when you feel those little sparks and doing more of that those are the things that you're doing just for you not to share with anybody not to like i mean you can share with people but it's not for them um it's for it's for you so i would start there like start by exploring something that's not to save you money um I mean, it sounds like you're well off. You you see, you have six figures in investments. You're very financially, very practical, very financially stable, very practical. But yeah, the creativity is is what's lacking. And but you still have it, right? You you didn't have to open your email like that, but you did, and it was fun, and we yeah. liked it. So that, that's what I'm saying. Like you should give yourself a little bit of credit and and try something new that you haven't tried yet. So write me a short story. Send it to me i will read it and i'm excited to read it because that was very fun i think those things are investments into yourself exactly and honestly too like we all kind of build these these things around these fences around ourselves where it's like i am this way i am a practical person yeah. i i get money you tell to, yourself stories exactly you create and you, a story you of brand you yourself mm-hmm. instead of going maybe i'm more maybe i'm different and maybe you know not not that being creative makes you more, but it just means that you're expressing yourself differently. Right. And I think that you have a lack of expression in your life and you should express yourself differently. You don't need a drink to get there. You don't need to to go to a club to get there. Yeah, you've but, learned what you don't like. So now it's time to do something that you maybe like and maybe you haven't tried it yet. Mm-hmm. That's all. Because I think the focus has been like, oh, will this save me money? No? Okay, well then I won't do it. But try just opening your mind up a little bit to like, it's okay to spend a little money to like figure out if I like it. Yeah. And, I mean, and you don't have to spend money. You can just write a short, short story. It's stuff. free to write but, a short story. But like, you know, you could take a pottery class or whatever the hell. You, know, you could take something like an improv class. We, always, like, we, we love to say that. We're either going to tell you to break up or take an improv class. It's going to happen. So, uh, But that's the point, right? Just, just, And to those of you out there who are, who are not this gentleman, mm-hmm. it, and you're going through something similar, it's just about recognizing perhaps a lack of creativity in your life and maybe you have the spark that can fix that mm-hmm. is all yeah and on that note we're going to take a, a quick break and we will be right back after a word from our sponsors and i'm gonna lean over and kiss this beautiful woman right here what on camera well no i'm gonna do it during the break oh okay secrets just want to give a shout out to our sponsor today simply safe Simply Safe is freaking awesome. Simply Safe is dope. Yeah. Okay. Go we, ahead. Why? Why do you think it's dope? Uh, because you can install it yourself. Yes, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Well, look, I don't want to talk to people. No, that's why I learned how to install a, a lighting fixture myself and do all the electrical work. Just exactly. because I do not want to hire somebody. Having an electrician come and like, hi, I don't want to. and like, can you take your shoes off? And- yeah, I just don't like that. I, I, and then like a stranger. And then if you have someone coming over to install a security system in your house, then they know the security system. Exactly. They and can simp- break into your house. And Simply Safe is a dope security system, dude. Like, 
It has entry, motion, glass break, sensors. If there's a break-in, Simply Safe uses real video evidence to give police an eyewitness account of the crime, and that means police dispatch up to 350% faster than for a normal burglar alarm. It also has outdoor cameras and doorbells that can alert you to anyone approaching your home. Uh, it's monitored 24/7 by security professionals, and you can and the, and like I said, you can set it up yourself with no tools needed. That's the best part of you it. You don't even need a fancy tool. I just got a thing. I mean, you, if you have a husband who's a tool, then that I mean, that's, that's extra, but you don't need it. I'm saying you don't need it. Well, but, but, but I hope you need your husband. Well, yeah, but, but I'm saying a husband that's a tool. I see. I don't have a tool husband. So oh, okay, good. I don't know. I don't. I. Thank goodness. Yeah, I wouldn't need that. Uh, and the coolest thing too is that the fee, the fees are are so low. It, it's fifty cents a day, no contracts. Yeah. So if that sounds dope to you, like it does to us, go to simplysafe.com slash stdty today to get free shipping on your order plus a sixty day money back guarantee. That's simplysafe.com slash stdty to save on home security today. Simplysafe.com slash stdty. I don't think you're a tool. Well, I sure hope not. Do you remember that band tool? Oh my God, what a great band. You don't need that either. And we're back with Codependence. Hi, Steve and Nikki. First and foremost, you guys are freaking awesome. Thank you. Thank you very listening much. Listening to your podcast has really helped me grow, so thank you for that. You're welcome, and thank you for listening and joining us. My question is, how can my boyfriend and I become less codependent? We've been together for a little over a year, moved in after three months of dating, and boy, oh boy, were we ever toxic and severely codependent. We've been doing a lot better. We're trying to, we're trying really hard to make our relationship into a healthy one. But the one thing that we struggle with is having our own lives, is having our own lives. Haha. <laughs> I'm the type of person who's great with being all by myself. I need alone time to decompress, but because of us forming this habit, I'm always asking if he wants to do everything with me, which can stress me out because I don't get that personal time. He's my soulmate. I've known since day one, and so has he. Thankfully, he wants to grow and better this relationship as much as I do. So what can two young, dumb, and in love people do to have a healthier relationship? Thanks so much, Katie. First of all, I think it's so healthy of you to be self-aware yes. and have that perspective on yourselves. I don't, me and Nikki talk about this all the time. I don't have as much fun if Nikki's not there. Right. If I'm on vacation, if I'm at a place, if I'm watching a movie, it's not as fun. If Nikki doesn't want to watch something that I want to watch on Netflix, I don't even watch it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Barely, right? Barely. Only because, unless I have to, unless it's something that I'm doing that's related to something I'm working on. But I really don't, only because if I don't get to talk about it with Nikki, it's not that interesting to me. Mm -hmm. or it's not that fun. Yeah. I just don't care about it as much. And so so I think that you have that. And I think that that's great. But and I like Katie um like re require a lot of alone time. Like yes. I I love alone time. I get a lot done. I like I have so many thoughts and I sometimes just need to process them all before I can add another person to the mix because if I haven't processed these thoughts and then I'm trying to take in their thoughts, it just becomes overcrowded and overwhelmed. So I really do need a lot of alone time to process and I think, you know, it just came from um, growing up and spending a lot of time alone. Mm -hmm. I'm just, that's how, what I'm used to doing. So you close your office door and yeah. me and the kitties all lay on the ground outside of it and <laughs> yeah. we wait for you. It's totally natural. Yeah. Very, very healthy. Very normal. No, but I think that we have like um, an understanding that it like, he doesn't take offense when I spend alone time. No way. Be, even though he would rather do things with me, of course, and I would like to spend time with him, but I'm not the best version of myself if I don't get that alone time first. And that's never in doubt. I no. never am like, oh no. And, and he're very, he's very independent. I don't know how your boyfriend is, um, but Steve's very independent. He's not like beating down my door, like, are you ready yet? Are you no, ready no. yet? You know, he's not like that. Um, but we're both very quality time people. Like that's our love language is quality time, and so that is very important. If we if we were not hanging out at all, I would get very depressed, and I would probably become clingy. Um, no doubt. But being feeling safe enough that I can take that alone time without offending him or or uh, him taking becoming resentful of me for it is everything. I feel so safe. I feel like um, he accepts me for for who I am and and what my needs are, and um, and vice versa. And this allows you to have a home. That has what I call reset energy. Yeah. We're like, you know, uh, we just left JK News or whatever we just did this week, or like you left you leave a job, you go home. What would you do if nobody was there, right? Yeah. And and that kind of lets you recharge sometimes for some people. 
And so me and Nikki had that recharge energy. Like she can be exactly who in the fuck she is when she gets home. Mm. And I can be exactly who the fuck I am when I get home. We don't have to. It's not like, well, what are you going to do? There's none of that. Yeah. And, and, and we're never wor- even worried about that. Never even crosses my mind. Mm-mm. So that's why we're nervous to add a kid to the mix. Thank you. Uh, yeah. True. <laughs> yeah. Like we want one, but then also it's kind of like. Am I doing this now because it's just a biological time to do it? Because if not, I might wis- miss the window. I'm like, dude, we got great systems because in right place. now, yeah, we have. It's like fucking awesome oh, right now. Sick. I'm like, are, are we, we gonna just, just going to destroy it? Right. And then that kid has the ability to break our hearts, <gasps> like, and even murder us. I have in three percent of the true, cases. And I have like, how long does it take to like build trust in a relationship where we feel like we're so safe with each other? Mm-hmm. Now we're gonna add a stranger to it. Yeah, a, a stranger, stranger that's blood related to us, so that we don't even feel like we can disown it if we don't like it. Like we can't even cut it out if it's toxic. A stranger that parasitically grew in your body. Yeah, that makes my boobs deflated after. But they also get big too beforehand. Yeah, and then very deflated. All right. <laughs> does it do anything to your butt? Probably. Does it make it bigger? And then deflated. Oh, shit. Yeah. I don't know. It could do all kinds of stuff. I am not worried about you I, deflating at all, just to be clear. I am. You are the most beautiful thing on the I'm earth. I'm going to accept my body no matter what. But I'm well, just, me too. But I'm just saying that I like, I don't like change in general. As like, long as you keep those eyes that stare at me, I'm good. What if my eyes burn out? The kids could do that. I don't know. Maybe. What if he takes a birthday candle, shoves them both in there? Oh, shit. I don't know. I know, man. Parenticide or whatever it's called. Parent, parenticide? Yeah. What, will you still love me if I lose my eyes? No way. Man, this kid's going to ruin everything. Uh-huh. All right. Well, anyway, um, I hope that you um, just continue to br- b- bring healthy habits to the table. I think that habits are what create long-term changes and eventually create healthy relationships. So as long as you guys are aware of it and then you can like try systems out and see like, did that work? Oh, cool. We'll keep doing it. Do you enable each other to be yourselves? Right. Figure that out. As long as that's good, then you're good. Yeah. There we go. Thank you're you. welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. And you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Nice. You're welcome. Hey, Nikki and Steve. Love your videos and listening to your podcast. You guys are the best. Five stars. Yay. Thank oh, you. Thank Did you, you really do that? Did it you helps a lot. actually go it to the iTunes and rate us know. five stars? Because I just want to make sure. If, is that a joke or is it, was it like a- We don't want to get canceled. Please because give us five stars. we would love if you went to go and give thank us five you. stars. It means a lot. It actually does really help. It our helps a lot. Anyway. Please, please, please give me all the details and tips on how you plan for vacations. My husband and I love traveling, but it can get so expensive. How do you and Steve do it? Please share your expertise. Thank you, Emily. So we're going to be going into details on financial things, uh, I think, in the next episode or within the next two episodes. Credit and finance, for sure. And that's part of it because Nikki is a fucking motherfucking monster expert at putting aside money for things like vacations and and travel and stuff like that. And, And that's really... The secret. I can give that away uh, here too, like a, just a simple. Oh, please don't! It's a, it was a preview. A well, preview. you know what? We're gonna talk about so much in that episode. Oh. So if you like this, if you like this advice here, then tune into that episode. And even if you don't like this advice, you should tune into that. That's episode. like Adam was Batman being like, eh, "Next time, will Batman make it?" Yes, he will. That's not true. We're gonna yes, talk about credit and finance. Uh-huh. Shut up. Go ahead. I'm gonna tell you the secret, all the secrets, the juicy secrets. No, um, I got this question after we went to Atlantis. Recently, we went to the Bahamas, and if you'd like to check out our vacation, go to YouTube.com/slash Nikki. Um, we tried to make it less about like, oh, we're travel vloggers, and more about like, this is how we are on vacation, and you're yes. just like chilling with us. It's it was really, really, really fun. It was the most relaxing vacation we've ever, ever taken together. It was awesome. Um, but yeah, it was definitely pricey uh, and I, I think we got a great deal on it, uh-huh. but yeah. like it did take some saving for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got some questions from people afterwards, like how do I save for that type of vacation? And first of all, I don't know what your income situation is like. Um, the two of us didn't really travel a lot until, I mean, we were like almost 30. Yeah. Yeah, so it's really only the past handful of years. Neither of us really traveled a lot like in our 27. childhoods. Yeah, well, 27, we traveled to Europe, but that was paid for by somebody else. True. So we didn't even pay for that. True. And then we went to Hawaii when on my 29th birthday. When we got engaged. Yeah, when you proposed to me. And that was our first big splurge True. vacation. Right? That was like 5G's. It was like, well, yeah, after yeah. everything yeah. included. Like it was 4G's for the... 
for, hotel yeah. and airfare yeah. and then like probably a thousand to eat and stuff and we didn't really do any elaborate vacation stuff like shit, we just dude. we didn't even the pick the hotel we hotwired all that shit yeah like it was it was well yeah. it was expedia if you want to see right. shout out the right company thank you um, I handled all of it, so Steve yes. wouldn't, wouldn't know that. But yeah, so anyway, that was the first time when we were 29. So that was the first time we ever like were like, ooh, we're splurging. And it was a really good year that year too. Like we had like, ooh, we got some pocket money, yeah. right? Okay, how I approach it after that, because we decided that we loved vacationing so much that it was so much more rewarding for us. Again, because I think we're quality time people. It was so rewarding for both of us in our relationship that we decided instead of spending and splurging um, on gifts like uh, throughout the year, like Valentine's Day, birthdays, anniversaries, anything we don't like do that. It. We don't buy anything for each other. Before, we had been splurging like yeah. crazy trying to impress each other. Yeah. And we did impress each other. Oh, it yeah. served its purpose on birthdays and stuff. But then we decided as a, a relationship that we both valued vacation time more. Like we just think it's so fun and so dope and it's cool to explore things with your partner. Nikki already buys the stuff that she wants throughout the year. Yeah. And, and like, I don't want a lot of right. like, so big things. It's it's not like, the. I mean, it used to be like that though. It was like, hey, I, I need an iPad this year because I'm working on this thing for design or whatever. Yeah, and and then business, I got you it. Yeah. But it was like, what? it doesn't, it's not, it's not sexy anymore, right? It's not. So, so when you can share an experience together, that's kind of what we decided. Yes. Like that's it's, what's fun. It's so much more valuable to us. Yeah. Um, so same system though, even if you weren't going on vacations and you were buying gifts instead, it's the same system where minimally, minimally you put aside 20% of your income, of your monthly income, right? So um, let's say you're making $2,000 a month. You would put away um, 400 a month and then... That sounds like a lot to some people, like because especially, especially if you live in Los Angeles, right? But what I've found is twenty percent. If people, if you force yourself to put twenty percent away, because let's be honest, like if the IRS asked you for four hundred bucks right now or twenty percent of your income, you would hand it over because you have to, right? Yeah. People will find ways to make that work because they have to. Well, if you treat your own self like you have to pay yourself because you should, like you you worked for that money, you should pay yourself first. It's called paying yourself first. So you put aside twenty percent of your income and 10% is for long-term retirement investments stuff like that the other 10% is for uh like some short-term goals so vacation or birthday presents or maybe you have some things you want to fix in the house that, that are kind of costly the that 10% is for that pile is for that so 10% of $2,000 is $200 times 12 months of the year that's $2,400 that you would save for a vacation alone or whatever, like your luxury items alone for the year. Uh, that's, a, that's a tight vacation, 2400 bucks. They go to Yuma, Arizona for $2,400. And that's if you make $2,000 a month. If you make more than that, you could have a dope bird vacation or you could have more things throughout the year. And if there's two of you contributing 20% of your income, then that's an even sicker vacation. Yes. and that's the key, kids. Yeah, and so that's what we do. Um, we always try to put away 20%. Um, sometimes I've had to break into that other long-term investment. I try to like not touch that, or I try to like look at it as borrowing. If I do borrow from that, I'm going to replenish that because that should really be for retirement and for your long, long, long-term. Or like you want to do down payment on a house. Yeah, or, or investing. Yeah, investing. Yeah, yeah. Investing. yeah exactly. Um, yeah, so I hope that helps. Um, but yeah, money management is all is all that is. It's not that we're making you know tons of money to be like crazy luxurious vacations. It's just managing it so that over time, over a year, we have enough to go on a vacation. Yeah, and you should because it helps. Uh, it helps with everything else, right? Yeah, like creatively, you feel more unstuck. Like you, like if you're just whatever it is, like getting a little bit of relaxation time. Especially and I'm sure for there's you. people out there listening to this that are like, "What? You should invest that in back into you know uh, something that's going to give you an ROI. Like, why would you waste that on a vacation every year?" But experiences me, matter to us. It, that's it all. really matters to us, and it's an investment in our relationship, oh, like yeah. which matters more to me than anything. You know, being a quadrillionaire at at 75. Yep. You know, exactly, I don't. I just don't. Dude. Life is meant to be lived. Right we now. did it. We're millionaires. <laughs> now our kids can have it. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Uh, all right. Next question. Question for podcast. Hey, Nikki and Steve, I love you both. Discovered you from Totally Sketch and then rediscovered you from JK. Whoa. Well, hello. Welcome. Way to stick with us. Yeah, dang. I guess it was meant to be. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going through a breakup and I don't know if my ex cheated and it's driving me crazy. We remained friends for a little bit after the breakup, but he stopped talking to me because I kept asking him questions about the breakup. Last week, I realized that he had always ignored my questions about this one girl. She's a co-worker of his and they'd often hang out, always Snapchat so the messages would get deleted. And when the three of us hung out a couple times, she'd flirt with him. During the relationship, I made it clear that she made me uncomfortable, but he stressed that he had no interest and that she's not even attractive. Anyway, I'm pretty sure he emotionally cheated on me. I straight up asked him if he did and he never answered me. Do I ask again? Give more time? My friends tell me it doesn't matter, but I just want to know. Also, I'm not that sexual of a person, but I'm starting to miss sex because I was used to having it for so often for over two years. Um, I definitely, I'm definitely not going to be able to have another relationship for a long time, and I'm fine with doing friends with benefits type thing. I don't think I could ever do a hookup, though. I, I don't find any of my friends that attractive, and I don't want to meet a rando off a dating app to have sex with. Do I just wait till I'm in another relationship to have sex again, which realistically won't happen for a while? Or do I have sex with an unattractive friend just to have sex? Do I meet an attractive rando off an app even though I can get an STD from them? I know that was more than one question, so I'm sorry. But hell, love you both. It was interesting. Yeah. Uh, okay, this is fascinating. So it was a breakup, and you're still going to fucking question your ex about shit? It's a breakup. You got to move on. I get it because she wants closure. I know. It's that open, it's like an open wound and it might never get answered and but, it'll drive you nuts. But she, we already know what her closure is because she's begging for it in the second part of it. She's like, I need sex. Sex is your closure. Okay. Right. It's not about sex with the last person It's a or, or figuring out what happened yeah, with the wait, last wait. relationship. Can I just, because uh, I don't disagree, yeah. but devil's advocate, Please. Um, just because I went through a similar thing okay. and it was like, we were bro- breaking up because I thought he, I already thought he was cheating on me, but there was no proof. But I had to know. Okay. And he kept denying it and saying that it did, nothing happened. And it drove me crazy because every instinct in my body said it did. Yeah. And while I could just be like, well, whatever, I don't need to know. True, I didn't need to know. But it was driving me insane. And I ended up reaching out to that girl and asking her if they ever hooked up. And I just, I needed that closure. Um, because to me, it helped me get over it him. You. It helped you Because move to know that he actually really did cheat on me helped me be like, it helped me categorize him in a different way. Like, oh, you're a fucking scumbag then. You know, like okay. instead of. But see how you handled it? Yeah. You reached out to the girl. Yeah. You, you, you can talk to the girl. You have no right to information from him. You guys are, are broken up. So the idea of like interrogating your ex about something after you're broken up is what I'm questioning. Mm. Right. Like being like, hey, I have a right to know this information. It's like, yeah, we're broken up. I, I don't, I don't owe you anything. I guess right you now. don't have a right to it, but I feel like it's a courtesy or like a respect. Like, if you really did love me, can't you just give me this closure? I know, but I'm not, I'm not, just, I'm, I'm not, not expecting them to be reasonable like that. I'm not disagreeing with you at all because yeah, yeah. I think that you're that you saying this. I think what you're saying is the mature and correct response. What I'm saying is I hate it because I'm so petty. And I get that, but I'm like I'm relating to the emotional aspect of I, it. I get the emotional aspect, but it's so nice that you had the girl and you knew her totally. that you could reach out to her. Yeah, because you didn't have to go to the. I ex. didn't know her very well though. Like but I, does, I had only matter. met her once. You, but you were able to get an answer from her. Yeah, right. You didn't get an answer from your ex, I which I think is healthy. Find her on Facebook. I think that's healthier though yeah. than like going to your ex. No, she made him call me and and admit well, she's it over dope. The phone. Yeah, she's dope. Yeah. So you got lucky with that. Yeah. But yeah, so I do think that it'll just drive you crazy if you continue to expect an answer. But um, I also think that you might just be, you're a little like... Um, Heated. Yeah, and but also like not neurotic is the wrong word, but like it sounds like the way you need to know the answers to things before just like letting things take their course. Like, well, do I meet a rando? Do I need? Do I hook up with my friends even though I think they're ugly? Yeah, do yeah, do yeah. I wait to a relationship? That's not going to happen for a long time. You don't know what's going to happen. You're drawing 17 conclusions. Yeah, you 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 have to it's like you have to know the answer before you even live the experience. And That's you don't. Neurotic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I get it. I get how your mind can spin that way. I I feel like my mind can sometimes spin a certain way like that too. Um not that I, I don't let it take over though. Um and that's just because like I just keep coming back to I don't know the answer. Mm-hmm. Like and I'm just going to have to live with that I don't know the answer. That most people don't will not know the answer. Like you're not going to know. You're just you just have to live your life and it's and okay like, not to know. Yeah, and it's actually it's more okay. fun. It's more fun just not to know. Paint the picture for yourself. Yes, he cheated on you. How about oh, that? Oh, that well that part? Yeah, paint the picture for yourself. Just paint it for yourself. You already had those instincts. It, just assume you're correct. Yes. I think you sound pretty correct to me. I mean, you know, yeah. you saw some things. Don't question what you saw. Give yourself a little bit of credit. Maybe you're pretty good at, per- at perceiving what you saw. And the so, sex thing, 
I just don't think you need to know the answers. Like it, it I, and, and to say, well, that's not going to happen for a while. I won't get in a relationship for a while. You just don't know. You right. don't know. Hop and, on and a dating app. You might meet someone who's cool that I you think also by, by setting these limitations, you're already closing doors. Yeah, you're going, I'm not one of those people who, who trash people who fuck on a dating app is what you're judging. You're judging your own pot- potential decisions. Yeah. You're closing roads that you've never even traveled. When one of the last people that uh, wrote in, they discovered their soulmate on Hinge. Boom. And they're getting married now. So, like, you know, you just never know. And uh, to the STD aspect of it, you're going to run that risk anyway. Whether yeah. you meet someone in person or meet them on an app, you're going to run the risk of people having STDs. Just get checked before you have sex. Yeah, or before you get in a, j- in a jacuzzi with them. I don't, I don't, As we all know. I don't think that. I don't think you get, so. I don't think you get it from jacuzzi. Or like a wide pool. I don't think so. I don't so, think so. Just be careful with that. I don't, a wide pool? Oh, yeah. Those wide pools will get you. Get, that's how you get the STDs? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I, I should be well, more careful. Well, you don't know when the pool filter is not working. So if I get if if you get an STD from me, it might have been from the pool. <sighs> not from the I know it was Not from, from me pool. fucking around. <laughs> you mean, would never do that. I would never do that. I was dealt totally the pool. <laughs> or the jacuzzi. Oh, right, right, right. All right. Well, I hope that helped. Those hey, damn, you know those. Take pool, it easy, those, lady. Those, those pools, you gotta, you gotta fix their filters, man. Don't be you, d- getting pools off a dating app either. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. All right. This one's called Help. Promise it's juicy tea. Hi, Nikki and Steven. <laughs> I have my boyfriend of three years. We've had our ups and downs, as in he cheated on me, and so did I. Okay. Oh, shit. We worked things out and it was going great, but during the three years we have been together, he would talk to girls I didn't want him talking to due to him cheating on me with them. He's in the military and goes away at times for a couple of months. Being honest, I don't have much trust due to the cheating. A few weeks ago, he saved an escort site. I confronted him and said it was a joke. I confronted him and said it was a joke at work. Oh, he said it was a joke at work. I wanted to show his friend. I shrugged it off. My question is, should I stay with this guy? Am I wasting both of our times? He says he loves me, but after everything that's happened, it's hard to believe. Thank you. Loved the confused bitch. Confused bitch. Don't stay with him. I want you to, no. Huh? I want you to thank him for his service <laughs> and then dump him. <laughs> but you got to thank him for his service first. Mm. Uh, yeah, come on, man. Look, I had a, a bud who used to cheat on his wife all the motherfucking time. And I didn't even think it was real until he was literally taking chicks off Craigslist and banging them in my own apartment, okay? And I thought it was I thought it was just memes and like he was just kidding around until I heard it. I heard it wasn't his wife and I was like, "Holy fuck." He used to get caught uh, exchanging messages with chicks on his phone and stuff. And he would say it was jokes and, oh, I'm just doing a bunch of bits and shit. Yeah. I mean, that's the fucking move, right? That happened to me, too. <clears throat> Plausible S- deniability. cheating ex. Yeah. Don't fall for it. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you cheated on him, too. Like, obviously, you're not down for cheating anymore. So, exactly. Like, it's you have to start with clean slate, and you, it sounds like you guys did, and now he's breaking the clean slate. Listen, there's always... I disagree with getting back with cheaters, okay? Because you you have a distrust, but you were you you feel mature enough to have handled that. Yeah. But let's be real, that's eating you up now because. Well, he's doing shady. He's shit. still doing shady shit. Yeah. So that's the only answer you need. This doesn't even have to be that extreme. It's like, guess what? Because of before, and yes, we both did it, and yes, we both suck for that. Yeah. We can't have these kinds of slip ups. Yeah. We need clarity. We need like perfection. Yeah, and there's there is a difference like um. Other ex, the, not the cheating ex, but this guy that came close. Um, he, I caught him doing shady shit, exchanging messages with girls, trying like flirting with them, trying to hook up. Meanwhile, telling me he didn't have time to hang out and stuff like that. Yeah. It's really fucking shady and st- and shitty and sucks. Um, and he did a lot of other things too, uh, revolving lying and stealing and. It, bad it was yeah. drug use and yes. all kinds of stuff and we broke up obviously after way too many blaming drug use on you to a cop true yeah, yeah. framing me uh <sighs> like st- he stole this marijuana pipe that i had in my room that was like sentimental i didn't even smoke out of it it was just like there because it was like a gift from somebody and it was like sentimental he stole that would <laughs> smoke with it all the time and i was like always asking where this pipe went and he would always blame my brother for it and then he got caught 
drinking in his car with the cop, like a cop caught him drinking in his car with his buddy. And the cop searched his car, found my marijuana pipe. He tells the cop it's my pipe. That is the biggest bitch move I ever the heard The cop of. calls me and says, I have your marijuana pipe. Oh my God. I'm like, I don't have a marijuana pipe. And then the cop was like, You're, that's not what your boyfriend said. And I was like, I don't have a boyfriend. And then I hung so up on him. So good. <laughs> is that not the best fucking drop the mic ever? <laughs> and then I went to his house and fucking confronted the and shit. And you smacked him. him, right? Yeah. Well, I hit his shoulder because I was so mad. Yeah, good for you. Um, I wanted to punch him in the face, but I just couldn't. I don't have a violence thing in me. No, you don't. Um, but anyway, that guy, we broke up for three months. I was like, I can never trust this guy. We somehow ended up getting back together. Like I thought I could be just friends with him. And then we ended up getting back together. Um, but Nuts. he completely churned around to his credit. Yeah. To I've, his Narcan ass credit. I've always heard that that never happens. Like, you know, the, there's just certain tendencies that people just don't change and stuff. This guy turned his shit all the way around. Yeah. He ended up being such a good, caring, thought. everything I wanted him to be in our relationship before he became, and he was, he was good at that. And, he never like uh, so you know if that's a real clean slate like people can start from a clean slate but he never did shady shit again because mm. if he did it would have been over but he still narked on you to a cop he did and that yeah. is unfucking forgivable i didn't think i was going to forgive him good but but you did somehow then I did. but then i ended up breaking his yeah, heart, yeah, you know so uh, not because i cheated or anything but that was the guy from a different episode that yeah. i broke up with because i just wasn't passionate about yeah, it for anymore sure. yeah for sure Anyway, um, yeah, break up. Yeah, but thank him for his service because that is um, that is important. That's that is that's. True. I come from a military family. I think it's important to thank them for the service. Oh, okay. Before One last question before we end. Yes. Um, okay, this is actually an update to a question that we've answered previously. So update hi nikki and steve i sobbed in the car when i heard my question read that's be besides the point i ended up being dismissed from the job because i guess upper management saw how miserable i was lol honestly it ended up being that she hated my previous manager who hired me and some of my co-workers so she decided one random ass day to lay off all the people she had hired needless to say i ain't miserable anymore but i'm now scared my man is supportive and wants me to take this year 2020 for myself to develop that blog passion as well as my little side aesthetics business uh Please Love shout it. out a fellow cat lady in Toronto at JD Aesthetics, JDH Aesthetics. There on, it is. On IG for anyone needing their brows or lashes done. There you go. There's a shout out. But Brows even, or lashes or brows or lashes? Brows or lashes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. But even with employment insurance that's covering my bills, I still can't shake the feeling to get another job. I don't know what it is that's been scaring me, the unknown. How did you get over the fear when you were starting out in acting slash social media influencing? Thank you again. Love you all so much. That's such a valid fear. Oh, yeah. Yeah. God. It's kind of the, one of those, like, leap and the net will catch you. Uh, you were forced to leap because you got laid off, and then the net did catch you. Yes. So, it worked out. like, your boyfriend is saying, or your man is saying, like, he supports you. He wants you to take this year for you. Take it. Yes. This bitch. is, he's giving you an opportunity. Yes, queen. Yes, cunt. Take it. Get it, bitch. Get as much as you can, but, and, but don't take it for granted. No have that fire burning under you this like mm -hmm. oh no i might have to get a job again that i hate again so like Kick have your that own ass. and and win. every day get up and have that reason for why you need to win and win why for you yourself. Win can't for him. Let, it, let it go back exactly um and if you do squander it if you do feel like you wasted it and you do have to get a job again don't beat yourself up about it just take those lessons that were learned yes learn from it yeah uh, but, but we're um, proud of you. We're proud of you. So we're proud starting of you. A, th a new thing that is hard to do. And entrepreneurial stuff is it's so hard, hard, man. It's hard. And it's hard to promote your stuff. But there you are. You just got a shout out. Look so. at you. Look at you, killing it, growing up, crushing like it, twenty twenty, in front of everyone. Yeah, put yourself out put there. Put in yourself out there. You know, Clap recently emojis. someone told us they were too nervous to plug their own thing. Right. But you weren't. And good for you. And good didn't for it, you. and didn't it help out? And good for you. And good for you. You can get your browser eyelashes so that when you're on Google Chrome, no. you can get eyelashes on the top. It's not browser eyelashes. What is it? It's not browser. You know, you get, you're on Firefox. No, you're on it's Google browse Chrome, you're on. or eyelashes. Your That's eyebrows. Your that eyebrows that? or eyelashes. Not you get, browser eyelashes. You don't get browser eyelashes? Does no? your browser have eyelashes? Well, I use Opera. <laughs> Why? 
Don't judge my browser. I don't <laughs> like that. It probably has terrible eyelashes. No, it's quick. Terrible eyelashes. I like it because it's fast, but I never was impressed by those eyelashes. Probably need more volume or something in there. That's what I always thought. Yeah. I turn it up, but it doesn't help. <laughs> I just got it. Stupid. You're so stupid. You love puns, don't you? I don't. You love puns so much. I accidentally fucking stumble into puns. 2020, of you. year of the Steve puns. No, no, no. Iceman puns. I bump into 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 puns like you bump into nightstands. I see. Thank you. I don't bump into them. I get slammed into them by my abusive husband. I heard you get flipped into them after he made me suck his dick. All right, we got to go. Right, this was a fun one. <laughs> so thank you so much for writing in your questions. You can write podcast at Nikki.Limo if you want us to take a look at them. Uh, we try to get to as many as we can. Uh, but yeah, keep them short. Make sure you compliment us. And yes. we'll probably read them. It, it helps so much, guys, when you compliment us. It, it, it just helps us so much. It just, it, it just helps really helps us like so it much. Helps so help much. us help you. Yeah, please. And how you can also help us just without helping you. Um, but just, you know, rate, rate us five stars on that itunes helps. that yep. would help us help us and for a future episode please email us at podcast at nikki.limo thank you so much everybody subscribe so you don't miss any of it and check out our patreon we oh, yeah. love our patreon we, page- uh, we have extra podcast episodes some call them on patrons. Our, our patreon you're messing up my sentences we have extra podcasts on our ep- on our patreon and we do another Stop it. You're messing up I your sentences you. yourself. Just, just click the link. That. Click the link. I was, waiting, link. For I was waiting for that. Go away. I hate you. I like you. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.